Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Alex here. Now a couple weeks ago, I did a live stream here because I came across a weird issue and uh, it seemed weird to me. We did a live stream, a few of you hopped on and helped out. We try to figure it out and I think that we have a solution for this. What am I talking about? I ran across an issue where a C++ benchmark that I was running was actually faster on my Intel MacBook Pro than on my new M1 Max MacBook Pro. What the hell? So what I want to do is I want to show you what the problem is, what the problem I ran across is, and uh, then we're going to do some C++ benchmark tests like uh, quick sort, for example, is one that I've been doing before on this channel. And then we're going to try to explain what's going on based on some of your comments. So here is the website. It's called Benchmarks Game. And you've seen me do this on this channel before. We do all kinds of different languages here, different algorithms. And the one that I'm talking about is Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot is a mathematician that created the fractals patterns. You might have seen those pictures before. So here we have the Mandelbrot algorithm implemented in all these different languages. And we're talking about the C++ implementation here, which is pretty nice for testing the CPU load and doing a comparison of a multi core test. So that's the one we're implementing, not implementing, rather copying this code and pasting it. <laughs> so I copied this code just the way it is here. I pasted it because in order to run benchmarks, just so that you can compare apples to apples, it's good to just copy it exactly as it is, and then run the commands that they give you at the end to actually build it. And here is the command line to actually execute it. Of course, you can mess around with the parameters and so on. And I sometimes do that, which is something we're going to do today as well. So I copied and pasted the code. And here, I'm going to actually build it and run it. Now my files are named a little bit differently here. So let's get the right file names. And for the architecture, I'm going to use native. All right, this should build it on the Intel machine. And let's see now, this is the resulting file, I'm going to time it, and I'm going to execute it. Now the instructions say to give a parameter of 16,000. So I'm going to start out with that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on my M1 Max machine. Now it's time for the moment of truth, I'm going to run this together and see the result. Now the original program does print to the console. So I'm not a big fan of that in benchmark tests because the different consoles print out at different speeds. However, we do have a preliminary result right now. And this took 1.2 seconds on the Intel machine and 1.5 seconds. Now this gives me a little bit of a hint of what's going to happen. I'm going to pipe the output to out.txt so there is no console output. And the same thing here. And I'm actually going to increase this to 160,000. And let's go. <laughs> okay, you can see that the Intel machine is already done. And we're still waiting for the new M1 Max. So what's up with that? I find that a little bit strange. Okay, this one finally finished. And it took 29 seconds on the Intel machine. Yet the same test took one minute and 16 seconds on the M1 Max machine. And I thought that I was upgrading. What the heck? You can see where my issue with this lies, right? Okay, we're going to put this aside for a second. And I'm going to come back to it and do another test to explain this as well. But for now, I want to do the quick sort to show you the test that I've been doing before on this channel. And this is a quick sort implemented in C++. Let me show you the code here. Very straightforward here, we have an array of 1 million items, and then we generate random numbers between one and 99 and stuff it into that array. And then we do the quick sort algorithm on that. Pretty simple, I got the same exact code set up on both of these, I'm going to build it and that's g plus plus dash o main main dot cpp. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now it's time to run it. So I'm going to time it and run main and let's also output this to out.txt so we don't see anything. And I'm going to do this at the same time again, just so that we can see which one finishes first. And let's go. Now some of you might say that because each time the array is generated again, it's not a very good test. But I've done this a few times already. And the results are pretty consistent. If you do this many times again and again. In fact, you know what, I'll run it one more time just so that we get a couple of numbers to work with. Okay, and we're done with two iterations of this test on the Intel machine 19.3 and 19.1 seconds on the max machine 15.9 and 15.9. Clearly, we have a winner here. And that's the M1 max machine. 
So why is it that this C++ test is running faster on the M1 Max, but the other one is running faster on the Intel machine? Well, the explanation, as some of you have pointed out, and I'm gonna read you uh, some of the comments here because I am actually not a C++ developer. I'm doing these tests, but there's a lot smarter people than me <laughs> leaving comments, and that's really appreciated. Thanks, folks. And also thanks to all those that came to the live stream who uh, gave some instructions. NAS says Mandelbrot supports C intrinsics for using SIMD instructions on Intel processors. Preprocessor macros prevent that optimized code from being compiled at all on anything that doesn't support AVX512 slash AVX slash SSC. So intrinsics basically provide C style functions for low level assembly code, which is very CPU specific. And this Mandelbrot test that I was running initially, it supports specific Intel instructions, namely AVX slash SSE. If we take a look at the code, here we go. We have statements like this. If defined AVX 512 or defined AVX or defined SSE, we have different stubs here for executing different paths of the code based on those definitions. I'll post a link to this uh, code base just so you can take a look. Casper S says, well written. Zoni U says, we need to get Alex to notice this. I noticed it. And also Walter Lopez says, from the Apple Docs, if your code includes instructions for SSE, AVX, AVX2, or AVX512 units of Intel processors, update that code to support Apple Silicon. And the best alternative to processor specific vector code is to use the Accelerate framework, which provides a vast library of vector operations optimized for all Mac computers. And uh, a bunch of other folks here left really valid comments related to this same problem. So in other words, this particular Mandelbrot test relies heavily on Intel optimizations. So. What I did was I stripped out all the Intel optimized code from the Mandelbrot test in order to execute this again and to give it a fair playing ground for both machines. Now it's kind of questionable whether that's fair or not. Why would you cripple something when there is a faster way of doing it on Intel, right? It doesn't make sense. So if something's available, use it. If Intel provides these optimizations, use them. If Apple provides this Accelerate framework, whatever that may be, <laughs> or somebody else mentioned metal optimized instructions, then use those. However, I don't have that code. And like I said, I'm not a C++ programmer, so uh, I can't really write that code. If you have an idea of how to fix the Mandelbrot test, it is actually an open source project and uh, contributions are probably welcome. But what I wanted to finish this off with is running the test without those optimizations in place to see what we get. So on the M1 Max, I'm gonna use the version of the code that strips out all the Intel optimizations, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the Intel machine, and I'm gonna run it with 160,000 as the parameter instead of what the benchmark documentation calls for, which is 16,000. But we're comparing this machine to this machine and not to the other benchmark results. Let's go. Now, while that's running, here is the activity monitor on the M1 Max machine, and you can see that that program is running. It's using up a lot of the cores, of most of the cores of the CPU. I think that's probably running on all the performance cores. And that is, in fact, built for Apple architecture. You can tell right there. And on the Intel machine, which now you can probably hear in the microphone, the CPU is using up all the cores, and that's 16 of them, but it's actually eight hyper-threaded. So there we go. Let's see how long this takes. And one of the machines is done. Can you guess which one? If you know which one, write your answer down below in the comment. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna finish running this test on the other machine and we're done. If you said the M1 Max finished first, you are correct. That one took one minute and 16 seconds and the Intel machine took one minute and 56 seconds. So now that we have level playing field with the code optimizations turned off, you can clearly see that the M1 Max in multi-core test with C++ wins this one hands down. But 
if we were to turn the optimizations on on the Intel machine, that one wins. Why does this matter? Well, this matters because a piece of software that's written in C++, which is a pretty common language, pretty low level language to be writing performant code in, performance software, if that software is written for the Intel machine and it uses the optimizations for that Intel processor, it's gonna be faster than natively build code on the M1 Max, even though that code was built for Apple Silicon, if it's not using optimizations like the Intel machine, it might very well be slower than on the Intel machine. There's probably no way to tell whether the code that you're running, the software that you're running is actually using optimizations or not. At least, I don't know of a way to do that. I guess the only way to tell is to actually run the software and see what happens. All right, folks, thanks a lot to all those that contributed in the comments and in the live chat. If you found this video useful or entertaining, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you later.